Good afternoon, everyone. You're welcome to today's um, edition of uh, Lawyers of Lawyers Alert's um, weekly series. So um, I want to start by apologizing for the delay. Um, the the program was supposed to the program was supposed to hold at eleven o'clock this morning, but due to circumstances um, that we could not control, we rescheduled for two thirty. And even at that, we didn't meet up with the time uh, with two thirty. So we are re we we really want to wish to apologize for that. Um, so today we are going to be continuing from the um, from last week's topic. You know, last week we made mention of the fact that we're going to be treating um, the, disc the disc um, discrimination against persons with disabilities prohibition act 2018. So, and last week um, we also made mention of the fact that it was going to take um, three parts, which we, which we started, which we took to the first part that last week um, after the introduction of the um, of that. So today we are going to be taking the second part, which would lead us to the third part, which will be next week. So now today we are going to start with um, provision of road transportation and services on the road for persons with disabilities. So um, that same act also makes provision that um, that says it is discriminatory discriminatory for a person who, whether for payment or not provides goods or services or makes facilities available to the society to refuse to provide those goods or services or make those um, um, facilities available to a person with disabilities or by the terms or conditions on which the provider provides these goods or services or makes those facilities available to a person with disabilities or by the, by the manner in which the provider provides those goods or services or makes those facilities available to a person with disabilities, that is so long. I'm really sorry for putting you through all that. So basically what that is saying is it's very discriminatory for anyone who produces things for the society, anyone who, um, anyone who um, provides anything for payment or not to the society to provide those things to persons who are physically challenged with some terms and conditions that are not um, that are not consistent with aiding their challenges um, to helping um, them overcome their challenges and it's also discriminatory for that person to provide certain um, goods certain goods to the public without putting into consideration persons with disabilities that's basically what this whole thing I read out is talking about. So th this um, this um, section also goes ahead to talk about, this um, act also goes ahead to talk about government transportation services, services providers to make provisions for lifts, ramps, and other accessibility aids to enhance accessibility of the vehicles, parks, and bus stops where persons with disabilities ordinarily would go or facilities where those persons ordinarily expected to use. So public vehicles or public transportation systems, whether parks, whatever it is that has to do with transportation, must be built and structured in a way that is consistent with aiding the um, aiding the pers persons living with disabilities to overcome their challenges. So where the government doesn't do this, the government is going back on the laws enacted, particularly the law, the Discrimination Against Persons with Disabilities Prohibition Act 2018. So it also goes further to talk about, say that every public vehicle is to have functional, audible, and visual display of their destination within five years from the enactment of this act. So most of these provisions of the act um, are most of these provisions are, um, are, are will I say, um, are foreseen to be, um, are foreseen to be worked on or are foreseen to be carried out within five years of the enactment of the Act. So remember last week we talked about the enactment of the Act, which was in 2018, and this is two years down the line. So from that day of the enactment of the Act to the next um, three years, because we're on two years already, these things are supposed to, all public um, transport systems 
are supposed to comply with the provisions of this act. So transport service providers shall make provision for lifts, ramps, and other accessibility aids to enhance the accessibility of their vehicles, parks, and bus stops to persons with disabilities, including those on wheelchairs. So every public make and parking lot shall have suitable spaces which shall be properly marked and reserved for persons with disabilities. So what this act do, so if you are um, conversant with um, the Western world, places like USA, you would see that these things are adoption, uh, an adoption of what is already happening there, what is prevalent there. So these things are already in, pl in place abroad. And I am really glad um, the, to the fact that um, we are, are trying to adopt the beautiful things. So, but it worries me a bit. Did I say a bit? It really worries me that um, Nigeria is facing a whole lot of challenges in terms of governance, leadership, um, and all that. So I really want to understand. I would really, um, I don't know, I really want to know how all these things are going to be possible because we are facing a lot of challenges. We have a lot of things um, that have been, I don't, that have been, um, that in our various laws that have lacked, that lack implementation. Things, and most of these, some of these things are things that obviously uh, that require the government, um, to, that require resources, financial resources, technical resources, and other forms of support. So if it has taken a whole lot of time, years and years and decades, to um, see all these things come through, I wonder how practicable this would be, owing to the fact that it's just a new law, is an act which has just been recently enacted. But I would really, it's really beautiful if this would be complied with. Not that Nigeria doesn't have the resources to do that. They do, but you never know. You know, Nigeria. But I, you know, one of the reasons we do this um, legal um, education, um, this legal education is so that people are aware, so that besides us taking these discussions further, you who now know would also take the discussions for that in your little circles, in your big circles, in your, you know, major, minor circles. So now that you've heard of these things, it's left for all of us who are now aware to engage our individual, um, individual leaders, depending community, states, federal level, constituency, wherever. So it's now left for us to engage these people, ask questions, and keep the conversation, conversations going forward. So that's one of the major reasons we engage in this legal education. To let you know, and of course, by letting you know, we expect you to start taking steps to the realization of that thing we are, ex we are educating you on. So this act makes a whole lot of provisions with regards to transport, transport, sorry about that, transportation systems in Nigeria. And now we can help um, persons with disabilities to manage their situations. So there are also fines and um, fines um, here stipulated. Um, the act also makes provision for fines um, whereby persons who commit um, offenses um, who commit acts that are contrary to what um, the act has provided would, of course, face their fines of 5,000, their fines of 1,000, dependent. So, a person, organization, or corporate body in control of a public parking lot who fails to provide for the reserved spaces committed and commits an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine of 1,000 naira for each day of default. A person without disability who parks a vehicle in the aforementioned reserved space commits an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine of 5,000 naira. A person who intentionally obstructs the reserved space commits an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine of 5,000 naira. There are a whole lot of um, fines here which serve as punishment to people who go against the provisions of this act. So going further, there's also provision for seaports, railways, and airport facilities which are all seaports, facilities, and, ve and vessels, railway um, stations, trains, and facilities in the trains shall be made accessible to persons with disabilities. This transitory provi provision of a period of five years within which all public structures should be adjusted to 
enable accessibility by all persons with disabilities as it is as it relates to accessibility of physical structure also applies to this provision so all airlines operating in nigeria are mandated to ensure the accessibility of their aircraft to persons with disabilities so anything that has to do that aids access to movements and transportation or um have also have also have um parts of the act that speaks to them so airlines are supposed to be structured in such a way that persons with disabilities no matter what your disability is would be able to access that public um structure public facility with with ease without anybody's help or even if with help but with little help all airports are mandated to make available the above for the conveyance of persons with disabilities who need presentable and functional assistive and protective devices to and from the aircraft so basically this act is making it compulsory that persons with um, disability find comfort and ease in accessing facilities that other persons who are without disabilities can ordinarily access which of course would limit their vulnerability because okay last week i made i made mention of all these things so like my boss would say these people are disabled because the society has made them disabled so if all these things are in place you would see that no one is disabled because if i can access this and you can access it if you can do this i can do this so there's nothing disabled about you so we are all the same we are all equal we should be treated equal we should everything that is public should be able to be accessed accessed by every member of the public no matter what your condition is so the next one i'm going to take in is liberty right to education health and first consideration in queues accommodation and in emergencies it is prohibited for a person to employ use or involve a person with disability in begging or parade persons with disabilities in public with intention of soliciting for arms or use condition of disability as a guise for the purpose of begging in public so a lot of things a lot of these things happen all the time so you haven't heard people's stories um some of these people because of the fact their vulnerability their relatives their neighbors their friends take advantage of them take of the advantage of them emotionally and which also translates to their physical disadvantage these persons are forced to um beg for arms for other people to use so there are a lot of things there are lots of um uh, issues going around um this uh, disability the fact that that some persons are disabled and the government should ease this situation but of course complying with all that the act has provided so a person who contravenes the above commits an offense and is liable to come on conviction to a fine of 100,000 naira or a term of 6 months imprisonment or both a person with disability shall have an unfettered right to education without discrimination or segregation in any form so this is what we see everywhere in school so you see people not being able to relate um with persons with disabilities because they are because you're blind they are blind crippled whatever it is so deaf and all that so it, people discriminate against these people and they feel because they are not um they don't have eyes while we um, other persons have eyes they should be um they should be deprived of some privileges that every normal human being should have and yes they are normal human beings they just have a few challenges that all of us have even though we may not be blind even though we may not be deaf we may not be dumb we may not we may have hands and legs able to walk we may still have other disabilities that are not physical per se so nobody's complete so that doesn't mean, mean anyone is disabled but the society has made it a cause to further disabled persons who are unable to help themselves the national commission for persons with disabilities shall provide educational assistive devices so we are going to talk about the national commission on the last episode which is going to be next week so 
all public schools, whether primary, secondary, or tertiary, shall run to be inclusive of and accessible to persons with disabilities. Accordingly, uh, accordingly, every school shall have at least a trained personnel to cater for the educational development of persons with disabilities. So, this act is basically trying to equip our society with um, the necessary, um, with everything that is necessary, that is needed to make persons with disabilities feel comfortable being in the society. We can't live the, without these people because they are a major part of existence, of our existence. They are humans. So all these things were made mention of at the first episode, which was last week. So I really hope that you go, um, for those of you joining us today, I, for the first time today, I really hope that you go back, go through the last one so that you can be able to catch up with today's own so um you know i believe that if you don't go back to watch last week's own to catch that um, you won't be able to catch up with today's own because it is a continuation that's the reason i'm not able to repeat some things to say some things because they are a repetition this is like a flow from what happened last week so i won't be able to mention some things or i have not been able to mention something so that i don't i don't put too many words into the heads and minds of persons listening to me so it will be best if you go through last week's own so that you can be able to catch up with this week's own so that when i'm not mentioning some things you know the reason i'm not mentioning those things because i have mentioned them earlier in last week's episode so if a doctor suspects disability in the course of treatment of a person who before was not a person with disability, the doctor may, with the approval of the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities, issue a temporary certificate of disability which shall last for not longer than 180 days. If the state of disability persists beyond 180 days, the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities, on the recommendation of the doctor, shall issue the person a permanent certificate of disability, which shall last for as long as the state of the disability persists. So, um, there are a whole lot of provisions. There are a whole lot of provisions. A person who unlawfully issues or obtains a certificate of disability commits an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine of 200,000 or imprisonment for a term of one year or both. So this act is all encompassing. So anything that ordinarily you feel any person with disability can encounter, can face in the course of disability, his or her disability is, made, is provided for in this act. So this act is a go-to document for anyone who is disabled, who seeks for justice, who seeks for who seeks um, equality? Who seeks fair treatment and and who seeks to be heard? So this act is all encompassing, and I really, really urge you to ex to pass this information. You may not need this information, but someone beside you may need it. Someone at your backyard may need it. So I I really urge you to go forward with this conversation to persons around you. And who knows, you may be affecting a life that we are not affecting at the moment. Thank you so much for being with me. I really hope to also have you next week where we shall round up this, um, the appraisal on the Discrimination Against Persons with Disabilities Prohibition Act 2018. Have a beautiful evening.